Kyor and welcome to Active Kids TV. My name is Blake. And my name is Corbin. And today we will be asking our famous chef called Simon Fox some questions. They will be about what happens in his kitchen and what types of food he likes and makes. Over to you Samuel and Caleb. Very slowly. I want you to do thin slices. I mean thin guys, thin. Toe, heel. Toe, heel. But I'm just going to tip my blade down. Just watch away from yeah, the Turn the video up. Use your fingers. Mariama, are you all good? Okay. Yep. Okay, so we need a small dice up there. How much? Not much. Just enough for the bottom of the pan. Now that we have completed this stage, we can actually speed up a little bit. You go to your pantry, you go to your fridge, you explore what is there, you discover what you can do with it, and then start learning how it can come together and create an amazing fun thing with with my result, I think you should be happy with yours. Hi, and welcome to Active Kids TV. I'm Caleb. And I'm Sam. And we are here with Simon Fox to talk about getting involved in cooking. So, Simon. Um, Sam, hi. I would like to ask you a few, me and Caleb, we would like to ask you a few questions about your show, Cook, um, Kitchen Kids. Absolutely. Look, thanks so much for having me on. Kia ora koutou. Kia ora. Uh, Breen's Intermediate School. Uh, and uh, it's a privilege for me to be here to answer your questions. So thank you very yeah. much. You're welcome. Um, yeah. I, I can answer any questions about Kitchen Kids. You can fire away any time. Okay. Go for it. Now, what inspired you to start Kitchen Kids? I liked the idea of cooking when I was a child, Sam. Mm. I, I believe that uh, I grew up with very little in our cupboards at home. We didn't have much. I had too many brothers that were hungry, more hungry than I was, and so there wasn't much there. What was there, I liked to invent and think that I could make something really good out of. Mm. And that's what I'm doing, going to do with Kitchen Kids, is show kids how to use what very little they might have in their cupboards or fridges at home, and we can make something out of that. That's pretty much what Kitchen Kids will do for you. Hmm. Yeah, that's why I like doing it. It helps you guys. What is the best thing about running Kitchen Kids? To see the results, so like I just said, let's say you've got only a small carrot and a little bit of celery and an old stinky old onion and maybe something here or something in the cupboard. Let's take all of that, put it in front of us and then start exploring it, look at it, discover what we can do with it, create something from it, learn from all of that as well. So it can be done. You can take the basics out of your kitchen and cook with it. That's what I like to get out of it. Watching you guys all be able to cook mm. with whatever you find at home without having to go shopping because that's expensive, right? Mm. Right. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Now, which recipe that has been cooked in the past on your show do you think is the most memorable and why? Well, I, I think that coddling eggs is a really good one. And I'm going to use coddled eggs in my next series. Coddling eggs is when you put eggs in, say, a coffee cup. You see you break some eggs into a coffee cup? Mm. We all like to break eggs, right, guys? Break a couple of eggs into a coffee cup and then get a pot and half fill it with water and then put the coffee cup inside the pot and let it just bubble away. With, and it will cook the eggs inside the coffee cup. It's really good fun. And then you can put cheese into the eggs in the coffee cup, mix that up, a little bit of chopped onion. Like I said, any vegetables, you can chop them up really, really fine. And on Kitchen Kids programs, teach you how to use a knife properly. You have to know how to use a knife, right? <laughs> and, uh, and we can make these amazing. So, so to me, that is a great recipe. It's so simple, and that's what I think a great recipe is, Sam, if that answers your question. Something as simple as cooking eggs. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I remember when we made that one. Uh, do you remember that? Yeah. Ah, did you overcook yours? Wait, no. you're the interviewer. Sorry. <laughs> Which recipe was your favourite? Uh, of all time? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I, I invented a couple of really good ones, actually, so it's a tough question. Um, I, I like my version of a vegetarian lasagna. I'm a vegetarian. I eat very little as much um, protein out of meat. I get protein out of legumes and other, other types of sources of protein. So I like to create vegetarian dishes. 
and I made a wonderful, wonderful lasagna. Uh, I have the recipe for it. If anybody's interested, I can give you the recipe for it. Some secret ingredients involved. Of course, being a chef, you have secrets, don't you? Yes. <laughs> the only type of secrets we should have, by the way, is cooking secrets. We shouldn't keep any other kinds of secrets. Not really. <laughs> So don't ask me what goes in it, but um, I will give you a recipe and uh, you can discover that for yourself. Hmm. Contact me on the website. Easy. Yeah. Do you run kitchen kits onto your own or do like, others help, like apart from your camera crew? That's a really good question. So Kitchen Kids is a full televised production. Um, the same people that are presenting uh, or helped to presenting today, David Duckworth and his company uh, have been very helpful with Kitchen Kits mm -hmm. uh, and producing the live stream. So we use multi-camera um, production, which means I have to have a team of producers, much mm -hmm. the same as what you have here today. Uh, and um, behind the scenes is people who are marketing Kitchen Kits. In other words, they're putting it through, trying to reach the Ministry of Education, letting them become uh, aware of what we're doing because we believe it's such a good thing. It requires quite mm. a team of people. So I'm very lucky to have a good team of people behind what I'm doing. Mm. Yeah. If that answers your question, Sam. Are there any other people in front of the camera? Not yet, but I really want I really want that to happen. I want you guys to actually take an interest in cooking and in time to come become uh, host chefs on Kitchen Kids. I think it would be a great thing. I'd love to be able to think that you could become a, a, a chef just based on your interest in Kitchen Kids early in life. There's no reason why you couldn't end up being a chef if that's what you want to do, and I can certainly help you to do that. To have other, other chefs in front of the camera would be ideal. Hmm. Because there's so many different ways of cooking and so many different things you can do. And sh all different chefs have different ideas. Just like you guys do when you get in the kitchen at home, you get some great ideas, right? Hmm. And that's why I'm here to help. You jump on my website or on my videos and you can watch and, and learn from me. And that's what it's all about. That's what I like to do. Who created Kitchen Kids? It was my idea. It was my idea. But my grandchildren will say it's their idea. <laughs> <laughs> So we used to cook at home with the grandkids. I had three little grandkids, Case and Hayes and Marley, and they would be allowed to sit on the bench while I would cook. And they would help just mixing things in bowls. And then they're watching day after day after day, watching granddad cooking. And they see it from the start to the finish. So then we started filming it. And I started filming the kids cooking. And it was a lot of fun. After dinner, we sat and we put the film on the TV and we watched the kids all cooking together. And we thought it was such a good idea that other kids could do it too. So Kitchen Kids puts you on the camera and everyone gets to see what you're doing, which hmm. is really cool, really cool. Simon. Hello. You ran Kitchen Kids for a reason. What do you want the students to, to benefit from? Yes, yeah, so I, like I like the question. I, I like the answer Sorry. even more. Uh, I want you to learn life skills from me. I want you to understand that uh, working together in a kitchen requires harmony. It requires friendship. It requires a lot of araha. Mm. Food requires love and care. Going back to those coddled eggs, coddled means to hold and care for. If mm. you're coddling something, you're caring for it. So that is, to me, underpins what everything in the kitchen is all about, and I want you to become better people by going into the kitchen and coming out having gained some life's lessons, especially if you're working together in a kitchen. Getting along together to produce something mm. amazing and healthy and nutritious is a good start to any day. Mm, that's very interesting. Thanks. What were the dishes you won the gold plate awards with? Ah, winning awards. What a great thing. Yeah. Makes you feel special. So the New Zealand Beef and Lamb Association are a business in New Zealand that uh, promote our beef and lamb, our own beef and lamb. And they, for a number of years, they don't do it anymore, offer these awards. For me, it was a challenge. I worked in two different restaurants for other people. They weren't my restaurants, but you can win these. Mine was for uh, a beef dish, I did a fillet steak, like a, a mignon with a mushroom, bacon, creamy sauce. It was just a surprise to know the judges were there that day and actually experienced this uh, dish that I made and I won a gold plate for that one. Another beef dish I, I did was a, a, a slow cooked dish. I believe that your family loves slow cooked food. Yeah. Well, 
sort of the judges on this particular day, and I got a gold plate for that. And then the two lamb dishes. Uh, one was a, a ragu, again a very French style slow cooked dish. Look up ragu, it's a funny word, uh, but I won for that. And I did a lamb fillet, which I used a crust of pine nuts on as well. Mm. Great mm. protein. So they loved it. I guess I was just um, fortunate on the day. The judges surprised me and turned up, and I, I won those plates. Apparently yeah. the food was nice. Wow, sounds very delicious. It is all delicious, of course it is. Thanks. Well, that's all we have time for. Oh. Thank you, Simon, so much for taking the time to talk to us about cooking meat for kitchen cooks. Well, Sam, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. This is Sam. This is Caleb and Samuel from Active, Active Kids, Kids TV. TV. Goodbye. Awesome, guys. Last week we interviewed Sarah Pella about her role in the community. We will we'll now play that video now. Hi, and welcome to Active Kids TV. I'm Alfie. And I'm Peter. And we are here with Sarah Pella to talk about being a politician in our local community. Hi, Sarah. Good morning. Hi, everyone. We're just going to ask you some questions if that's right. Yeah. Firstly, what inspired you to become a member of politics? So one of the things... Of Parliament, that, even. A member of Parliament? Yeah, so one of the things that really matters to me is making things better for other people, and I just felt that that was the best way of doing that. Ah. I've got another question for you. Yeah, sure. What steps are you taking to improve education in our area? So we're doing a, a lot to improve education in the area. One of the mm -hmm. things that we're doing is making sure teachers are well paid because we know how awesome teachers are. Um, you'll have seen that uh, we rolled out free school lunches for some of the schools in the area with yeah. kids that need it the most. Um, and we've had a lot of building projects. So after the earthquakes, um, we needed to do a lot of building to make sure that yeah. our school buildings were exactly how we wanted them to be. Mm -hmm. Great answer. What are your main responsibilities as our local MP? So my main responsibilities as an electorate MP are really the people of Ireland. So every country, the country is divided into a number of electorates. And so I have about 70,000 people that live in Ireland that I, I try to, to support as best I can with all of the issues and problems that they bring to me. And that includes yeah. some of the people that are at school here um, and some, some are in other electorates. Yeah. yeah. Um. Can you explain how a bill becomes a law in our country's legislative? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's quite a long process. So first of all, it has to be drafted. Um, and we have lots of very smart um, lawyers that actually work to make sure that we're presenting a good bill, even mm -hmm. in its first draft. And then it goes to Parliament for a first reading. Um, mm -hmm. It goes to Select Committee, uh, where what we do is we actually... Um, goes to a specialist committee. So if it was a bill about health, it would come to the health select committee, which I'm on. Ah. Um, yeah, and so then it comes to us and we have a really good look at it. Um, between um, the whole committee, and that's got Labour Party members, National Party members, Act Party members, Green Party members. Between all of us, we try to make the bill as good as it can be. And we also hear from the public as well. Goes back to Parliament for a second reading has something called the Committee of the Whole House and then a third reading and then it goes through final um, royal assent and that's when it kicks in to be a law that affects all of us. So it's quite a long process, um, but it's a really good one. Yeah, yeah quite a big process. Yeah, it is, eh? Time consuming. Well, how can young people like us get more involved in local politics? Yeah, so I mean, it's really good to see young people being involved in local politics. And I just, um, one of the best things about being an MP is hearing from the community. So um, sometimes schools will have a conversation um, in class about what they want to see changed, you know, what they want to be better. And then they'll often get together and write, write to me. Um, and um, so we, you know, we have letters from students about things around the climate, things about, you know, smaller things that affect them, like how they get to and from school. They write to me and then I can feed it up the chain to the ministers and then see if we need to do something about it. Oh, very cool. Yeah. How do you balance the needs of 
needs and concerns of our local community with national with with national issues yeah that's a really good question so half of the week when parliament is what we call sitting so we all go to wellington and we sit in the big debating chair yeah. um, and we have our select committee work and all of that so half of the week is doing that and the other half of the week we fly back to wherever our electorates are for me it's here um, fly back from Wellington to here, and then we spend yep. the other half of the week here. Ooh. So I have constituent clinics. Um, I have lots of meetings, um, lots of visits to places like Breen's. Um, you know, and I get to do really awesome, fun stuff like this too. So it's Ooh. a really busy life, but it's a really good one. Sounds very busy. Hmm. What issues in our community are you currently working on to fix, to address? Yeah, so a lot of people are worried about the cost of living at the moment, So, uh, which is a big problem that is affecting the whole country. It's not just Ireland. Um, in terms of more locally, um, just recently we had a bit of an issue around a pedestrian crossing outside one of our other intermediate schools, outside um, uh, Heaton School. Um, and I made sure that I was working to, to try to ensure that they got the safest possible signalised crossing so that school kids, when they were walking or biking or scooting to school, they were safe when they crossed that very busy road. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the challenges you face in representing our consistency? Some of the challenges? Gosh, um, I think a lot of it is uh, challenges would be the, the time available, right? You've heard that we have quite busy lives. So making sure that I, I do my very best for everybody all of the time. Um, and also just the length of time sometimes that it can take to change things. We were talking about how long it can take a bill to become law. Um, sometimes it would be great if we could speed that up a bit, but in order to have a really good process, it does take time. Yeah. How do you get the input from constitutions like us to inform your decisions? And what is a constitution? So um, everybody that lives in the electorate of Ireland, so roughly 70,000 people, yep. they're all what we call constituents. So they're kind of constituents of the electorate. So I've got oh. constituents of Ireland um, and my central Christchurch Central colleague will have constituents of Christchurch Central. So it's really just a way of describing the people that live in the area and the people that I serve and represent. So, yeah. And I forgot the first part of that question. What was it? How do you gather input from Oh, great question. Like us to inform your decision. Yeah. So um, I do, um, I, I have regular constituent clinics that people can book in a time to see me. So maybe like 15 minutes they come and they give me a quick overview overview of what's going on for them and I do lots and lots and lots of events so I'll go out and about um, and meet up with people at things like culture galore um, lots of um, ethnic events so Zimbabwe day and and at those um, events people talk to me and of course when I'm out and about um, people know who I am they'll come up and say hi and tell me what's going on for them so there are lots of ways that people can reach out and we have lots of emails, lots of phone calls, you know, lots of interaction on my social media. So my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, those are all ways that people can reach out if they want to have their say, which is great. Very well. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for students interested in pursuing a career in politics? Yeah, I think, do you know, I think the best piece of advice I could give was get to know yourself really well. Um, because this is a, a job of service, so you're serving the community. Yeah. And I think if you know who you are and yeah. you know what you stand for, what matters to you, it gives you a really good grounding in moving forward into a career in politics. So yeah, and obviously work hard at school um, and, and, and you do read up about it, like watch the news, you know, go online, have a look at what's being said and just, just really feed that knowledge and interest. Yeah. Good. Well, can you vote? And if so, who will you be voting for? Yes, yeah, so I'm a citizen of New Zealand and I'm over 18. Uh, permanent res residents can also vote and uh, people who have refugee status. Um, so yes, I can vote and I live in the Isle of Electorate, which means that I can vote in the Isle of Electorate for the Isle of MP. Um, so yeah, I, I can vote and I can vote for myself, which is a really interesting thing, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so I will be voting for myself <laughs> and I'll also, because you've got to 
back yourself, right? Um, and and I, I'll vote for myself to, uh, to hopefully get the opportunity to serve um, the people of Ireland for another three years. Um, and I'll also be putting my party vote to Labour, which is the party that I represent. Yeah. So you have yep. two votes. You have your electorate MP vote and you have your party vote. So I'll be ticking yep. Sarah Pallet and I'll be ticking Labour. So any yeah. members of Parliament can vote? If they live in their electorate, absolutely they can, yeah. So wow. if they're registered to vote in their electorate, then yep, they can vote for themselves. And you'd hope that they they thought well enough of themselves to actually vote for themselves. But it's quite a funny experience, you know, because in 2020 was the first time I sat for um, uh, to be the Member of Parliament for Ireland. It was the first time I put my name forward as the Labour candidate. Um, and yeah, so I got to vote for myself in 2020, which was really, it was really a strange experience. Yeah. And I couldn't okay. take a picture because you're not allowed to take pictures in the in the um, voting booth, yeah. but I really wished I could because it was quite special. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's all we have time for. Thank you, Sarah, for having the time to talk to us about being a politician in our local community. You're so welcome. Thank you so much. This is Peter and Alfie from Active Kids TV. Goodbye. 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 Welcome back. We will now pass you over to Samuel and Kayla, who are going to interview Emma Rutherford about music and songwriting. Over to you, Samuel and Caleb. Hi, and welcome to Active Kids TV. My name is Sam. She went home last week. Something about home felt unfamiliar. Yeah, that's right. Right. I thought we were going to... Hi, and welcome to Active Kids TV. I am Sam. And I'm Caleb. We're, we're here, here with, with Emma, Emma Rutherford to talk to her about her musician career. Hi, Hi guys. Emma. First of all, welcome to Along to Brains. Now, according to our producers, we understand that you have a career in um, music. You're a singer and a songwriter. And we'd like you to tell us a bit about yourself. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Emma, and I'm so excited to be here. But yeah, I, um, I'm a musician. Last year, I finished my music degree, and I made the decision that I want to continue following my dream. And I'm a full-time musician, so I gig every weekend, and I write my own music. And release it all the time so yeah how many songs have you produced three i've got six on spotify right now and all of the other streaming platforms hmm. <laughs> do you know what their titles are yes so last year i released my first single it's called think of me then in summer so this year i released a song called crazy which is a fun dancey summer jam and and more recently, I released a song called Ghost Town, which is um, about my hometown, Oxford. So about 40 minutes away, a small country town. <laughs> and um, I think we're going to watch my music video. Yeah. <laughs> she went home last week. Something about home felt unfamiliar. Sort of strange, don't you think? the streets alone but time moved on because life is linear and it's gone when you blink Sweet memories, naive mistakes 
nothing changes nothing stays the same staying behind and chasing goals of the ones you hurt the most i know it's strange they will forget your name nothing ever stays the same Welcome back. We are asking, and we are asking yeah, Emma Rutherford some more questions. Have you done any collaborations? Not yet, but I do have a really exciting collab coming up soon. Um, yeah, a really cool single coming up. But I actually, I, with the music video you just watched, I guess I did collaborate um, with my amazing cameraman David, <laughs> which you guys know. Um, very cool guy, really great team of team of people behind the video. So um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. But yeah, stay tuned because we've got some cool stuff coming up. How old were you when you discovered your talent for singing and music? Oh, that's a really good question. I I've always loved music. I really can't remember. I can't remember when I started to love it because I I think I always have. I think I was just born born to, to sing. I really just love it. So it's been a big part of my life ever since I was really small. <laughs> School notices. <laughs> what inspired you to sing? Oh, um, I, I think I just grew up around music. I had, um, a lot of family members like my grandma who loved music and my parents loved music. Although, um, I don't really know if they if they like singing in front of people like me, but um, it's just always been a part of my life. So it's always been, and everything inspires me music-wise, just new music and things like that. So, yeah. Well, that is all we have time for. Thank you, Miss, so much for taking time to talk to us about your musician career. Aww. This is Caleb and Samuel from Active Kids TV. Back Thank over you. to you, Corbin and Blake. Thank you, Emma and Simon, for coming in to be interviewed. We look forward to catching up again next time. This is Blake and Corbin from Active Kids TV at Brains Intermediate. See you next time. Goodbye.